At least five security officers were killed and one was injured in Iran as armed gangs linked to Jaish al ADL group attacked two police vehicles in Sib and Soran counties in Sistan and Baluchistan province on Tuesday, local media reported. Sunni militant group Jaish al ADL claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement released on Tuesday afternoon. Ali Reza Marhamadi, deputy governor of Sistan and Baluchistan for Security Affairs, said about the attack that some armed gangs attacked a law enforcement patrol team. He said search operation was underway to find the armed criminals. Semi-official Tasneem news agency reported that the police officers were on their way from transporting a suspect in the killing of a police officer shot dead in March. Tuesday's incident follows the deadly attack on Sistan and Baluchistan province that killed at least 11 Iranian security force members last week. U.S. Army warns Ukraine becomes North Korean missile test site. The U.S. Army is concerned that Ukraine has become a testing ground for North Korean missiles. This marks the first time North Korea could test its missiles in actual combat situations, according to the Pacific Army Commander General Charles Flynn, as quoted by Bloomberg. I don't believe that in my recent memory that the North Korean military has had a battlefield laboratory quite like the Russians are affording them to have in Ukraine, he said. As General Flynn noted, this gives North Korea the opportunity to gain valuable information on technical issues, procedures and the missiles themselves. The US will closely monitor how this unfolds. Flynn emphasized that he and other commanders are concerned about the information North Korea may learn about its weapons they would otherwise not have access to absent a conflict. In December 2023, the White House announced that Russia had purchased ballistic missiles from North Korea. In early January, there was information that the occupiers had struck Kharkiv with North Korean missiles. Vadim Skibitsky, a representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, told RBC Ukraine in an interview that North Korea actively supplied ammunition to Russia throughout the fall. According to intelligence estimates, the Russian army could have received around a million shells from North Korea. Ukrainian Prosecutor General Andriy Kostin said that the Russians have already used at least 24 ballistic missiles of North Korean production to shell Ukraine. The United States and its allies condemned what they described as Russia's firing of North Korean missiles at Ukraine, with Washington calling it abhorrent and Seoul calling Ukraine a test site for Pyongyang's nuclear-capable missiles. Deputy U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Robert Wood and other U.S. allies said that these violate U.N. resolutions. It's abhorrent that a permanent member of the U.N. Security Council is flagrantly violating Council resolutions to attack another U.N. member state, violations that further the suffering of the Ukrainian people, support Russia's brutal war and undermine the global non-proliferation regime, Wood said. Moscow and Pyongyang have both denied conducting any arms deals, but they vowed last year to deepen military relations. Trump's plans to end the war revealed pressure on Ukraine and concessions of territory. U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump has repeatedly stated his intention to end Russia's war against Ukraine in 24 hours if he wins the election. It turned out that his plan was to put pressure on Kyiv to make concessions to Moscow, reports the Washington Post. According to the Washington Post, people familiar with Trump's plan say that he said in a private conversation that he could end Russia's war against Ukraine by pressuring Kyiv to give up certain territory. Thus, Trump's idea is to push Ukraine to have 
hand over Crimea and Donbass to, Rus to Russian control, according to people who have discussed the issue with Trump and his advisers on condition of anonymity. According to the Washington Post, Trump said that he believes both Russia and Ukraine want to save face, want a way out, and that people in some parts of Ukraine would agree to be part of Russia. Trump's campaign, as noted in the Washington Post, refused to answer the question directly. Any speculation about President Trump's plan is coming from unnamed and uninformed sources who have no idea what is going on or what will happen, said campaign spokesperson Caroline Leavitt. The first reports of Trump's plan for Ukraine were circulated last November at a meeting in Washington between center-right groups and a delegation from the European Council on Foreign Relations. According to people who were at the meeting, former Trump White House aide Michael Anton described the expected outlines of the plan as Ukraine ceding the territories of Crimea and Donbass, limiting NATO expansion and encouraging Putin to reduce his growing dependence on China. However, in a conversation with the Washington Post, he said that he had not spoken to Trump for 18 to 24 months and denied knowing anything about Trump's plan for Ukraine. In March 2023, Donald Trump promised his voters to end Russia's war against Ukraine in 24 hours if elected president of the United States in the November the 5th election. At the same time, he noted that he would allow Russia to take part of Ukrainian territories to avoid war. In addition, Trump stated that if re-elected, he would seek negotiations between Ukraine and Russia.